Hello and welcome to the 10k subscriber special video. Thank you to everyone who made this magic number happen. So, in order to celebrate this, I'll be breaking some screws. Oh no! Anyway, removing some nuts and taking tools apart. All in the name of finding the best budget-friendly compact impact wrench. This will be our benchmark, a Parkside from Lidl. This comes as an impact driver, but its conversion into an impact wrench is pretty easy. You also get this combination anvil, so apart from the half-inch sockets, you can still use a quarter-inch hex bit as well. This tool with the parts for its conversion comes in at a total of around 75 euros. Our next contender is this one van from AliExpress. It claims to have 1,200 newton meters, and I paid 50 euros for the tool, a battery, and a charger. Just like the rest of these other tools, this has three mode settings. From Timi, we have this Snuok brand. What? 20 euros for the bare tool. It claims to produce 280 newton meters. Unlike the one van, this thing has a combination anvil, which enables you to use both half inch sockets and quarter inch hex bits. However, the magnet in the anvil is very weak and the hex bits don't really want to stay there. This is the final tool with such a combination anvil. However, unlike the Parkside and Snuok, the anvil is more secure for quarter inch hex bits. This is because they lock into place and they take a lot of force to remove. I bought the awesome from AliExpress for 70 euros. The price included a battery and a charger. This tool claims to have 400 newton meters. As I said, all these tools apart from the Parkside have the same mode settings, but the ones on the awesome are the only ones that you can actually see in the daylight. However, the mode selection button is the tiniest one I have ever seen. I bought this on AliExpress and I paid 70 euros for the tool, two batteries, a charger and some sockets. This Yofidra impact wrench looks to be the tiniest of the bunch, yet it claims to make 1000 newton meters. Also, these are the only such batteries with a charge level indicator. Our final contender is this Drill Pro impact wrench, which also claims to have 1000 newton meters. I paid 25 euros for it, however, it does not come with a battery or a charger. Luckily, I have plenty of those to go around. Before we continue with the video, I would like to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Also leave a comment down below with your thoughts on these cheap impact wrenches. First up, let's quickly see how much these weigh, because part of the compact criteria is of course low weight. As it turns out, they are pretty much equal in weight. Only the Parkside comes in at 1.1 kilograms and the others hover around the 1.2 kilogram mark. Another very important criteria for a compact impact wrench is the length of the tool. The shorter the tool, the more valuable it is for work in narrower spaces. The shortest tool here, including the anvil, is the Parkside at 12.5 cm, followed by the Yofrida, which is a centimeter longer. Next up, we have the Drill Pro at nearly 15 cm, and the One Van at exactly 15 cm. In second to last, we have the Snuok at 15.5 cm, and in last position, we have the Awesome at 16 cm of length. So the Parkside is the winner as far as weight and length are concerned. Let's see if it can keep that up in the testing section. First up, we have a test between these three. They have anvils that take quarter inch hex bits, so it's only right to try and find out which one of them functions best as an impact driver. For this test, an 8 by 200 mm screw will be used. All tools are on full battery and their settings are turned up to the max. The Parkside naturally sees no issue with the task at hand, as it was an impact driver to begin with. In the end, it managed to drive the screw in just under 8 seconds. Next tool, please. The Snuok from Timu, on the other hand, does not seem to be enjoying its time in my hands. It quickly begins to struggle and things get even worse after around half of the screw is driven. Progress is slow, but it gets there in the end. Just over 18 seconds is the time the Timu tool needed to complete the task in the end. Time for the awesome to have a go. Also let me know down in the comments if you have any other tools featured in this video. And the awesome with an unexpectedly good result there. Just over 8 seconds. Now time for something a bit more serious. I have installed a 70mm socket, so that can only mean we're moving up to lag screws. This is a 10cm lag screw and the fastest tool to drive it was the Yofrider with a time of 6 seconds. The one van didn't manage to get a good start but still came in 2nd position and with a very respectable time at that. Rounding out the podium places, we have the Drill Pro, albeit with a borrowed battery. It still did well to drive the screw in just over 7 seconds. It looks like the Parkside is beginning to lose its grip on the outright gold medal. In the end, it finished this task just outside the podium places, with a time of 8.5 seconds. The Timu tool was somehow not the most tragic participant in this test, finishing in second to last position with a time just shy of 10 seconds. And finally, this was the best run the Awesome gave me, however, it only managed to achieve 
a 10 and a half second final result. And even the socket didn't want to be seen with the awesome. Now let's take things to the next level. M10 lag screw, 20 centimeters long. The one van really showing what it's made of. It's the first to get the job done at just shy of 12 seconds. The drill pro trying to claw back some points with this one. It did finish in second position, however, does that really count when its time is twice as long as the winners? The small Yofidra from AliExpress managed to get on the podium in third place. Not a bad performance for this small tool. However, its 30 second time does not scream 1000 newton meters at me. What do you think? Not as bad as I thought it would be. The awesome is trying to get back on track. It ends up in 4th place with a time of 31 and a half seconds. Now there's a surprise for you. We have the Timu tool and second to last with a miserable time of 34 seconds. That could only mean that the last position has Parkside written all over it. No! God, please, no! 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 And before you unsubscribe or ask to talk to me in person to set things right, I have to tell you I ran the test a couple of times and the best the Parkside could manage was a time of 41 seconds. But it is a modified impact driver after all, so don't be too disappointed. Instead, let's see what these tools can manage in terms of breakaway torque. There are three nuts for each tool to break loose. One is set to 200 newton meters, the other to 250 newton meters, and the final one to 300 newton meters. All tools, as you would expect, are set to maximum settings and their batteries were topped up. This is a 30mm impact socket as the nuts we're trying to break loose are M20. First up, let's see the modified park site set the benchmark. With a total time of less than 2 seconds, there is little to complain about. Not bad, not bad. Now you. Amazon Stubby going next, of course a fully charged battery and maximum attack mode. It's saw some difficulty with the 300Nm nut, but in the end, I can't complain about that either. Your turn, Timu Tool. Show us what you're made of. Well, this didn't seem right, so naturally, I had to repeat the test. Now that's more like it. A final time of 12 seconds is considerably longer than what we've seen so far, but still, this is only rated at 280 newton meters. This one van has the biggest torque claims here. So far, it has indeed proved powerful, but let's see how it does here. And what about that? The quickest time so far. Bravo, one van. Bravo, indeed. The Drill Pro did well in the other tests, however it's a shame it doesn't come with its own battery and it had to borrow a spare one. But let's see how it does here. I would call that a good effort, but what about you? Let me know down in the comments section. Okay, let's see how the awesome does. So far, a hit and miss with this one. Fully charged battery and max power mode. No idea how it's gonna go. Let's find out. Let's all act surprised now. A disappointing performance from the awesome, to say the least. And unfortunately, that's far from the only disappointing thing about it. If you look at all the tools here, you'll see that only the Parkside and awesome have three battery terminals. The rest of them only have two. That made me think that the Parkside and awesome were the only tools here that had some intentions of monitoring battery temperature. Even more so when this is a basic Timu or AliExpress battery and charger arrangement. This is just a basic laptop type charger that plugs into the battery and charges it at a snail's pace. Only a positive and negative terminal, no way to monitor battery overheating at all. Whereas with a Parkside battery and charger arrangement, you get the extra terminal to look after the battery temperature. Now I was very surprised to see Awesome also utilizing that. 
because if you look at the charger, it has a third terminal just like the tool did. However, the charging speed is still very slow and the charger is suspiciously light. Fortunately, my middle name is Distrust, so let's have a look inside. Surprise! And what do you know? They are trying to blatantly lie. The third terminal is connected to thin air. And on top of that, this is just a basic laptop charger, albeit in tool charger form. I'm afraid the slow charging speeds were a dead giveaway there. The battery itself is just the most basic type with very cheap cells inside. However, there is that third terminal on it. Maybe it does something when connected with the tool. Well, stay tuned for that part. Now this is what a proper charger looks like. Parkside are not even a top tool brand, but they still have all the relevant certifications and approvals. It's always nice to know that there is at least some level of safety when dealing with something so easily flammable. If we open up the Parkside charger, you will see that all three terminals are actually connected to the board, and there is a fan providing active cooling. And all of this combines to provide much faster charging speeds. Finally, let's have a quick look inside the tools, apart from the Parkside that is, because you're probably sick and tired of looking at that. Our first casualty is Awesome, because well, I just don't trust them. I'm not surprised the Awesome didn't have that much power to be honest, because the hammer on it is really tiny. However, the brushless motor is encased in its own housing, which is rather nice. This means less stress on the body itself. But apart from that, nothing else is really noteworthy. Well, apart from this, that is. Even on the tool, the third terminal is connected to thin air. So many points off for trying to lie to me, awesome. The next tool to reveal its secrets is the Ophedra. It has a bespoke short anvil, which helps it to be one of the shortest tools on the list. As for the impact mechanism, it looks to be much bigger than on the awesome. The brushless motor also seems to be just that little bit larger, but the rest of it is pretty much the same. It even looks like they have identical control boards. Now onto the Drill Pro, which basically makes use of the same recipe. It has a brushless motor, which is pretty much the same size as the one on the previous tool. However, the impact mechanism is a bit larger, so the end result is probably marginally more power. However, an all-round larger tool. As for the electronics inside, you would probably know by now that they are pretty much identical to the ones in the previous tools. Now let's do something different for this one. Let's compare the weakest tool here, which is also the oldest design for one of these, to the most powerful tool in this test. And that most powerful tool would be the one van. Sure, it's nowhere near its 1200 newton meter claim, but it does have some good power. In fact, you shouldn't really believe any of these nonsense tall claims for these, because in most if not all cases, they are just wishful thinking. Probably the only thing here that is close to its claim power is in fact the Timu tool. Now how's that for a surprise? So now let's have a look at these side by side. On the right is the most powerful tool here, on the left is arguably the weakest. You can see the brushless motor on the right is about one and a half times longer. Also, the hammers are different with the one on the right being once again a larger one. And the spring is that little bit thicker as well. All of those little things in the end combine to produce a lot more power for the red tool. And let's not forget about this. Whereas all the other tools use a simple plastic control board with no way to properly get rid of the heat, the one van makes use of some metal components on its control board, hopefully providing better temperature control. The choice here is, well, a choice. I obviously like the Parkside for its small size and somewhat sufficient power, although it's not a real impact wrench, this one. Also, the battery system is really well positioned in terms of price to performance. On the other hand, this awesome really got on my nerves. It really did look like a promising platform because of the combination anvil. But with all these lies here, there really is only one option. Disqualified. There's one every season. On the other hand, this Yofidra was for 70 euros with two batteries, a really nice surprise. Sure, not the most powerful tool here, but it is something like an AliExpress stubby, if you will. These two are basically nowhere. And finally, we arrive at this thing, the bright red one van. This thing can be bought both on AliExpress and Tumu. 
probably on other sites as well. You can get it both as a bare tool or in a kit with some batteries. Now, as you've seen so far, the tool itself is powerful and I think rather well built considering the site it's from. However, the batteries on these are their weakest point by far. They use cheap cells that are down on power and the chargers defy the laws of physics. So one van, you really need to invest in some development regarding your chargers and battery technology. But until that day comes, there are two sane ways for you to use one of these tools. Either get a battery adapter and make use of a proper battery system or use a genuine Makita battery on these tools. The bare tools really are not that bad if you're looking for something cheap. However, these tools need a proper battery system. I really hope you enjoyed the video because it took a lot of effort to make. Please let me know what you think down in the comments, consider subscribing and like the video if you enjoyed it.